the full skill details have officially been revealed for Heraclius. So today we're going to talk about everything and why I think this might be a must have commander, especially if you're an infantry main. What's going on guys? Cheers. Now, the other day we had the details of Heraclius's skills, but we didn't have the numbers and now we do. And I got to say the kit on this commander is super unique. It's really, really interesting. And I honestly can't wait to talk about some of the commander pairings we're going to discuss later in the video, but I think I'm going to expertise this commander right off the rip I honestly do I have a ton of sculptures just sitting around doing nothing and I think that this commander will be a slam dunk for the commander builds that I already have but real quick let's jump into what Heraclius is actually doing the active skill as we know is a five target circular AoE which is super impressive it has a 1000 rage requirement we see now that the damage factor is 1200 and he also has a mighty shielding factor of 1200 now 1200 for an AoE is relatively low of course, Isange has a 1700 damage factor with a 50% bonus on his fourth skill. So this falls a little bit short of that. However, I want you to keep in mind that a lot of people praise Honda Tadakatsu and his primary skill is a three target AOE. It's a cone shape. And when he's secondary, which he always is, it's 1250. So it's only 50 damage factor more than what we see on Heraclius, except he's going to be dealing way more total damage because he can hit five targets in a circle. So right off the bat, I think that this active skill is way better than commanders like Honda. And I think that he could easily take Honda's place in a lot of different builds, but not only that. He also gives you a 1200 damage factor mighty shield. Now in my first video where I talked about Heraclius, I suggested that the mighty shield may be a unique mechanic to Heraclius because why else would they call it a mighty shield? We've seen a ton of shields in the game and the fact that they're calling it a mighty shield must mean something. And as it turns out, that was actually correct. Now, shout out to Chiskel who actually reached out to rise of kingdom support to confirm this, but the mighty shield functions exactly like a regular shield, except if there are regular shields occurring on the same turn. So what this means is the mighty shield technically applies a separate buff to your army so for example if you have a regular shield on a commander like Charles Martel we can see that on his active skill it's a 1200 regular shielding factor let's say you're secondary to Charles Martel as Heraclius so two turns later you're then going to gain a 1200 damage factor mighty shield now previously if you had two shields occurring at the same time whatever the stronger shield was would just take over and it was pretty straightforward but now because this is not a shield it is a mighty shield it can apply on the same turn as your regular shield the way that this works according to support is that the regular shield will absorb damage first and then any remaining damage that you may be taking will then be applied to the mighty shield so for example again if you have Charles Martel's 1200 shield and Heraclius's 1200 shield active on the same turn that is 2400 damage factor that you can mitigate on that turn now we have to test to see if the first shield breaks does the next shield immediately take over or does it have to activate on the turn after we don't know that so we'll have to test but ultimately this is huge right because not only that this is more versatile than a regular shield because in the absence of a regular shield it will just function like a regular shield so this is actually huge and i absolutely love this moving on to the second skill he gives you a flat 30 percent health bonus now this is really good i was actually worried that this health bonus would be something like 10 or 15 percent uh because this is a leadership commander and typically leadership commanders are maybe a little bit more versatile but they tend to be on the lower end of statistics but flat 30 percent health this is incredible this does not have to be in a garrison this is 30 percent health no matter what open field rally garrison doesn't matter and that makes him extremely versatile because there are a lot of glass cannons in this game that would really benefit from a universal secondary commander that just gives them 30 percent health like i feel like we've been praying for this for a long time and we're finally getting it which is huge now if he is a garrison commander your normal attacks have a 30 percent chance of giving you 30 percent increase to your counter attack damage or 40 percent increase if he's in your city this is an eight second cooldown this is really cool and what we're looking at right here is a really good recipe for a 5511 commander i mean just right off the bat these first two skills give you a ton of value and if you're a free to play player the fact that you can get a 5511 commander that will give you a really nice counter attack damage buff to your city 
is good now if you're free to play you probably still shouldn't be taking uh city rallies anyway but again the fact that he's so versatile means that sure you can slap him on your garrison but you can use him a ton of other places as well which is why i love this commander so much also because of the peacock feathers on his helmet everybody loves that it's just it's a crowd pleaser gets the people going okay let's go to the third skill here it says increases skill damage of this commander's troops by 20 percent now this is where i was speculating in previous videos that this could have been as high as ysg as it turns out it's not but Heraclius is doing a lot of other things that YSG is not doing and a flat 20% skill damage bonus. I, I don't think that this is something you can just wave as negligible. I think that's really nice because we are already seeing a lot of other commanders have small bonuses to the skill damage that they deal. For example, CPO Prime's expertise gives him 10% bonus skill damage, which, hey, that's actually nice. But if Heraclius is behind him, now you get another 20%. I think that's really good. The next part of the skill says when they use an active skill, their troop gains a mighty shield. So this is another mighty shield with a 400 shielding factor. Now, if you're garrisoning your city, it's a 500 shielding factor. So that's a really small difference but it turns out that this mighty shielding factor can occur anywhere it doesn't have to be in a garrison okay if you're in the open field you'll get a 400 mighty shield damage factor if you're garrisoning your city it's 500. so yeah it's slightly better in your city but the fact that you get another shield from heraclius is huge i would assume that while a mighty shield does stack on a regular shield i feel like it probably won't stack on a mighty shield like two mighty shields occurring on the same turn i feel like they won't stack but they might i mean because otherwise having him as a primary commander would mean that this third skill has basically no effect right if they don't stack and heraclius is the primary then the active skill that he uses just has a better shield than the third skill anyway so that makes me think that they actually might stack but again we'll we'll have to test this regardless this little extra shield is going to be huge for some of the commander pairings we're going to talk about in a second but first let's talk about his fourth skill which gives you 15 percent defense and attack when garrisoning a stronghold or city and unfortunately that means that this part of the skill will not apply in the open field so that's too bad however the second part looks like it will apply in the open field and this part is really interesting when their troop is attacked while it has a shield it has a 30 percent chance to deal direct damage to the attacking troop with a damage factor of up to a thousand and an eight second cooldown so this is really cool there's no requirements to this at all just if you have a shield there's a 30 percent chance you deal a thousand damage factor that's an instant proc 1k to a target that, that you're not even hitting it's someone that's attacking you so that's actually really cool it's a clap back it's a punishment to having people hit you and i think that that's pretty cool finally the expertise says you take 10 percent less damage from normal attacks straight up that's a little bit of extra tankiness i like to see it if you have three different unit types or more of course you get a four damage taken is reduced by an extra 20 percent. so a total of 30 percent less normal attack damage taken that's going to be really good for uh, defending your city but i wonder if there's going to be an opportunity to actually pair him with Honda imagine a Honda primary Heraclius secondary you'll get the full benefit of Honda's active skill at 2500 and you'll still get the circular AoE with the shield and I mean could we possibly see a potential mixed army open field pairing here that's completely meta viable I think that that's possible the only except the only thing that sucks about this is you actually need gear for our leadership commanders and I don't think many people have that so I don't know that's really interesting I don't think we've ever seen quite the compelling argument to use a fully mixed army in the open field like we do right now with Honda primary Heraclius secondary also Honda has the skill tree I mean this this seems good it seems good but it's not the pair that i'm most interested in okay now one final note about heraclius is that he does look very good as a 5511 value investment but he also looks good as a 5551 value investment right because that means that you'll get the full 20 percent bonus skill damage from this third skill and you'll get the full 400 shielding factor of the shield here as well in the open field and then the fifth skill being at one well a majority of the skill you don't care about and you'll still get half the value of that direct damage factor just for having this unlocked uh and the expertise is decent but what is it like 300 and 
10 sculptures like I don't I don't know it, it might be worth just leaving him at five 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 one I think that could be a really good value investment for a secondary commander that just gives just, there's just so much versatility here I love it now let's talk about more pairings because we've already talked about Honda but again he's not the one that I'm most excited about and I do think that Heraclius is built to be uh a secondary commander at least in the open field if you're in a city garrison and it is mixed he's probably really good as the primary I mean he's got the leadership tree which is going to buff all your different troop types and he's got the garrison and defense tree the most exciting pair to me is none other than Sargon and I mentioned this in my first video where we talked about Heraclius and it turns out that he's basically everything that I was wishing for and more now if we look at a Sargon primary with Heraclius secondary the synergy here is incredible okay first of all Sargon primary makes a ton of sense because you get the infantry and skill tree and of course you would run this army as full infantry the thing that Sargon desperately needs is AoE okay his active skill provides a ton of single target damage factor unfortunately it's over time but if you are sticking to that target this is very good but he doesn't have AoE now what we know about the odd debuff right the odd stacks and you that you can apply to a target is that this is applied when AoE damage is dealt which means that most players are running Sargon with an AoE commander whether it's you know with Guan Yu or with CPO these are totally good commanders that you can run also Honda behind a Sargon is totally possible you could even do Mehmed for example right so there's basically every good pairing with Sargon involves AoE unless it's a rally of course then you're talking about Tarek or maybe even Pakal but a five target circular AoE is the absolute best case scenario for a Sargon secondary now prior to the introduction of Heraclius you basically had to run a YSG behind him if you wanted a five target circular AOE and the problem with that is that YSG is very squishy yes he deals a ton of damage but he's just very squishy now Heraclius is going to be dealing less damage than YSG but I mean he's bringing so much more to Sargon's kit that it's unbelievable okay first of all he's making Sargon even more tanky not only with the two different shields that that he can give you which aren't nothing those are very good but also because of the fact that Sargon already has a shield on his fourth skill and on his expertise it says if his expertise is triggered when this commander gains a shield you'll inflict an extra stack of odd now if you have the fourth skill on Sargon giving you a shield and the active skill and third skill on Heraclius giving you a shield I mean you have you have three different ways to gain a shield which will significantly increase the probability that one of them occurs on the activation of the expertise which will significantly increase the probability that you're getting value out of this extra stack of odd in other words having Heraclius secondary is going to increase the frequency with which you're applying stacks of odd now it may be minor and we'll have to see how big of an impact this actually makes but it is synergy and I love it now also Sargon already gives you 20 percent in infantry health now you're gonna get 30 percent more we're talking about 50 percent bonus health that's actually huge and this makes the gatekeeper shield less important on this army than any other infantry army what do I mean by this well you're already gaining 50 percent health with these two commanders you could easily replace the gatekeeper shield with something like the hammer of sun and moon and have just an unbelievable amount of attack on a commander that otherwise doesn't have that much attack I mean if we look at Sargon yeah he gives you what 10 percent and that's it and he won't get any from uh, Heraclius again that massive amount of health frees up the weapon slot for infantry and that's huge Heraclius can also pair really well behind a Herald I mean think about what people normally do with Herald they either run him in front of a Martel or in Alex both of those commanders are shielding commanders and now we have Heraclius who's also a shielding commander who's doing a little bit more he's also dealing circular AoE that's actually huge but he's also giving you bonus skill damage and what does Harold do Harold pops off a ton of his active skills because of Stamford Bridge this seems like a really powerful pair right both commanders remember Harold has circular AoE as well if he's surrounded so two commanders popping off circular AoE damage that seems really good on top of the fact that Heraclius gives Harold the health bonus that he desperately needs because Harold is very squishy people don't realize this yes he's very prickly and deals a lot of damage but he is very squishy because he lowers his own defense so here we see bonus health that you can give him bonus skill damage two different shields that you can give him on top of his own circular AoE and 
if you take him to expertise Harold's gonna take 10% less normal attack damage I think that's really good I think this is an exceptionally good pair that you could do here of course we have to talk about CPO as well really CPO is just good with anybody right any commander that you slap behind him you can make work really well but again I think there's a lot that Heraclius brings to the field that is going to amplify this pair a ton now CPO has a bunch of infantry attack just like Harold and I think that's what Heraclius really needs he doesn't have any attack or defense on his kit at all so pairing him with one of these two commanders seems like a really big slam dunk to me for the sort of overall elevation of stats across the board and not just focusing all on health but again we also have two aoe commanders on this build here huge debuff from cpo is going to apply for the aoe and hero class it's a small aoe uh, damage factor so it's not as big of a as big of a deal but here again we'll see 50 percent infantry health i mean that's that's so much health it's it's absolutely ridiculous he also gives you a shield that will stack with the mighty shields on Heraclius as well and I think that this pairing is also incredible now we could do an Alex primary with Heraclius secondary the problem with this is the attack tree I think and also Alexander primary in the open field is typically a big target these days because most people do not run Alex primary because of the attack tree and that kind of makes them a big target in the open field so I think this pairing is very possible this shield will stack you get so much attack on Alex and there's there's actually a lot to love about this pairing to be honest with you one of the things Alex misses is AoE and again Heraclius is providing a ton of AoE and health which is exactly the two things that Alex needs so I actually think this is a great pairing it might not be the best pairing but if you've benched your Alex for better things this could be a way to pull him off the bench the Martel pairing is interesting I'm worried that they won't be dealing enough damage because most of the damage is going to come from normal attack damage on the active skill here with the 30 percent bonus and the circular AoE and Heraclius is a little bit low to be the main driving force of the damage factor so I'm a little worried about that but you do get a lot of counter attack damage and it would be very tanky that is for sure I think this would be a good free to play build obviously but I don't think it would be a main build Tark is really interesting though Tark being primary also with the defense tree not the best tree to have on your primary but definitely infantry is better than the leadership build so of course you would want to go with this conquering actually is nice for buckler's shield so I do like that and you are dealing a ton of single target damage with Tark, and then AoE damage bonus damage basically on Heraclius you get a shield you gain the health for infantry that you need for Tark, and the attack on Tark is what Heraclius needs I think there's a really good synergy here all damage bonus rage reduction I, I mean I think this is also a very possible commander pairing that you could do now the Pakal pairing is also interesting we're talking about 60 percent infantry health I mean that's that's a bit much I think that's crazy I'm also worried that there wouldn't be enough damage factor on this pairing I'm not sure maybe I'm wrong about that but this certainly would be an extremely tanky build which I mean we would have to test it out and see and I think this goes without saying but I think Trajan is sort of a shoe in pair here I think again like Honda you could actually build a fully mixed army if you wanted to it would be extremely tanky and a very good way to bring that Trajan buff into the open field you could probably actually hide Trajan behind Heraclius if you wanted it to be extra tanky I mean overall it I mean it'll have the defense tree overall it's going to be very tanky regardless and you may prefer the rage engine on the support tree but again that's this could be a new a new pairing for Trajan I think uh Trajan hasn't been seeing that much love lately and I think this could be a nice little slam dunk now let's talk about the downside of Heraclius this is this is the biggest downside okay first of all we've touched on the fact that the damage factor is not huge right it's not through the roof it's not YSG it's not uh Joan of Arc Prime okay it's not nothing especially because it's a circle AoE and it's five targets but it could be a little bit higher now the biggest downside of Heraclius is March speed it's gonna be the March speed and if we look through his build there is nothing on here that gives you March speed and this is one of the problems with pairing him with infantry okay especially Guan Yu now we we didn't talk about Guan Yu and you might be asking yourself why is that well it on paper it would be exceptionally good right Guan Yu really needs infantry health throwing him with you know with a commander that gives you a five target AoE on the back end is exceptionally good and Guan Yu primary in general is insane right especially because when he gains a shield he gains 15 percent bonus skill damage which I mean that that synergy right there is great but the problem with Guan Yu and the reason that nobody really runs Guan Yu with Leonidas anymore is because it's so slow 
it's so slow and and i think that that would be the problem with Heraclius. now if we look at cpo if we look at Harold, if we look at charles martel if we look at alex and even if we look at sargon all of those commanders have some amount of infantry march speed now it's good to pair them together so that march speed stacks and you actually have a decently fast uh infantry march uh, but if you start to pair Heraclius with commanders like guan yu I do think you're going to run into a little bit of trouble. Even Tarek has a little bit of March speed outside of Alliance territory. So yeah, I think the biggest flaw with Heraclius is no March speed. And unlike Honda, who also can slow targets up to 50%, it's only for two seconds, but it is a nice little instant slowdown. Heraclius does not have that function. So he's not going to be snaring targets like Honda will. So in that way these two commanders still will serve relatively different functions and i don't think Heraclius will completely replace honda but if you have a choice between the two i'm personally leaning more towards Heraclius. he's tankier sure he doesn't have any march speed but other commanders do and yes he doesn't have any attack but there's a billion ways that you can get infantry attack these days anyway especially if you're running him as a secondary and your infantry set looks like this and you've already got a bunch of infantry attack on the chest piece and the helmet I mean you're not going to be short of infantry attack so we don't have to pretend like that's a flaw with Heraclius I don't know I think this commander is going to be really good and personally I'm super interested in him running behind a Sargon because this is probably going to be the way that I run it I think I'm going to either expertise Heraclius or I'm going to get him to 5551 that I might stop him there and just test it out and see, see if he uh see if he's any good but if you have a Sargon primary with Heraclius secondary that essentially frees up your Guan CPO you can run Guan CPO again and still run the Sargon with a really good really effective tanky secondary commander with circular AoE I think that is it's a no-brainer to me and then that'll free up my Tarek to pair with whoever I want could we do possibly a Harold Tarek oh my god the possibilities here are endless boys anyway I would love to hear your thoughts on Heraclius in the comments section below do you think he's going to be as good and versatile as I do or am I missing something please let me know while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really does help out the channel a ton it helps push this video out into the YouTube algorithm if you're new here make sure you subscribe and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon Peace.